so it was the night of May 30th, and I was uh, 10 years old. Um, I was sleeping in the middle of the night. Uh, my father came in the room, he woke me up, and uh, you know, I can feel his energy was off, and he was frantic, and he said, we have to, you know, we got to go to the hospital, we have to run. So um, I got out of the bed, uh, got dressed, and uh, we drove down to the hospital. Um, I just know that hearing him in the car, he was telling me that you know, my brother was shot. In the car, you know, uh, me and my dad, we're, you know, he's uh, crying and um, I'm not really understanding everything that's going on. So we get to the hospital and you know, my, my mother's there, um, all my, my other brothers and um, my other family, uh, people are there. And we're just, uh, you know, we're just sitting in the lobby and the doctor was telling us, uh, you know, he was, he was shot in the heart and, uh, you know, they're doing surgery. And, um, and then it was from there, it just, I don't remember, it was a blank in between, but from sitting in the lobby, I was up near the room uh, where he was at. And um, I just remember my, my, uh, my dad and my, my mom telling me to just pray. And so I was just sitting down uh, on the floor and I was just praying that he'll be okay. And um, He didn't. <sighs> sorry, sorry. No, I'm okay, I'm okay, keep going. So, uh, um, yeah, my, my dad tells me uh, he didn't make it. Uh, there was a decision to be made that uh, the doctors told him that uh, he was uh, he didn't have enough oxygen to his brain, and so that he was uh, he was brain dead at this time. And uh, so they told him, you know, my mom and dad he had to make a decision because uh, he would, you know, if they were to keep him how he is, he just would be brain dead and he would be a vegetable and wouldn't be who he was and he wouldn't, you know, uh, and it just, it wasn't him, you know? And uh, so that they made a decision to, he was on life support and they made a decision to pull the plug um, and let him go. And um, they, they went in the room uh, I, I didn't. I never went in the room. Uh, I just stayed and sat down. And it was the, from there. I don't know what happened. Uh, I just remember we were at a someone's house, and it was the next. You know, it was all the way to the morning. This happened at like three, four in the morning. So now it's um, seven, eight nine in the morning and we just had a house and I just remember the sky, it's, it's like brown and gloomy and, and it was just like, a, it was quiet. And didn't know what's next. Uh, it was life changed for me. I, I lost my big brother and he was, uh, to me, he was, a, he was a superstar, you know, growing up in the basketball, he was, I mean, he was all American, and he was this, you know, this great high school player, and uh, he was going, to, he was in college, and 
Um, he was just so good. And I always I went to all his games as a kid. Every high school game I went to, watched them, and uh, you know, it was just tough, you know, losing your big brother at that time. Uh, later on, my uh, my uh, my dad and my brother are talking, and. Uh, they're you know, just screaming and, and everything and um, they're telling me, they're not telling me, but they're talking in, about what happened that night. And apparently what happened was my brother was, he was in college, he's living with his roommates, he's at his house and uh, in this community of apartments, um, there's a a white old man who's 67, I believe, at the time. And he has a daughter that lives uh, in this, in the community, in the apartment complex. And she was at my brother's house. And the father, who is a ex-police officer, he and the, him and the mother, didn't like that he would, the daughter was at my brother's house, uh, that they were talking or whatever, that he was just, that he was there, I guess. So they went over to my brother's house and the mother knocks on the door and uh, the father, he hides on the side of the door. So my brother opens the door, talks to the mother directly. Uh, his hands are up here holding the, the, the doorway. And the father is here, but he, my brother can't see him because he's just talking to the mother. So as they're talking, whatever, I don't know about what, uh, the father comes out from the side uh, and, and he just shoots my, my brother. Uh, right in the heart and he's an ex-police officer so he knows where to shoot a person he knows uh, he knows what he's doing with the gun and uh, from there I don't know I think I don't know where he went but they, they eventually they caught him um, he was arrested and then we had to go through uh, you know, the trial and things like that. But um, from my understanding, what I see is that the white guy didn't like his daughter messing with a black guy. Um, you know, he shot him for that reason. So uh, we went to we had went to court, went to trial, um, and in the court system in America. If a person um, has intent of going to shoot another person, which is attempted murder, uh, and in his in this situation, he brought a gun, so he knew where he was going. He knew what he was going to do with the gun. So this would be considered first degree murder because he had the intent before, and he planned it that he was going to shoot my brother um, because he was a police officer. Uh, ex-police officer retired of course they're not gonna give him that so uh, he didn't get first or second degree he got manslaughter uh, manslaughter is a much lesser uh, crime so it, he got 16 years um, and of course he's gonna be in a, when he goes to prison he's gonna be protected and such because he's a police officer and things like that um, and you know, we were, I mean, we were definitely upset about it because we, we felt he deserved to be, you know, have life, you know, uh, for, for this harness crime that he did. Um, but, you know, that's America, it doesn't work like that. And so, uh, and that's what we had to live with. We had to live with uh, the fact that today, uh, 
it's past his time of you know 16, 17 years that he was a free man. He was able to get out of jail um, and you know, continue his life uh, and walk around free. And, um, and my brother doesn't. So, uh, but you know that that's a you know that's the system and that's how it works. Um, America is this. Uh, it's a, it's a strange place, um, you know, it's a great place for opportunity. Uh, there's a lot of words being said and stuff, but it's not, um, it's not all great. And so uh, we've seen situations of what we're seeing now with the police brutality and killings and um, things like that. We've seen this in the 60s and 70s and 50s, like, since Martha the King and before, there's been many of these incidents. Uh, so, as things have changed a little bit, but things have stayed the same. And um, watching the things that are going on, it's every year it seems like it's another issue. Uh, this last issue, I know that um, with George Floyd's situation. Uh, when there was a lot of protests going on, it was in a lot of different um, states and a lot of different cities all around the, the country and all around the world. Um, so it got a lot of attention. And I know like when, my, when these things happen, uh, my family, they go out and protest as well because it's the same situation of a police officer killing a black person, um, unjustified, no weapons, no, you know, an innocent person. So I know um, when these things happen, my family goes out, they write their posters, and uh, now I have uh, my nieces and nephews, and they're growing up, so they're all involved with my mom, uh, my dad, and uh, so they, they all go out, and they, they did this, this last year, and uh, they protest with everybody as well. Uh, so it's always a, uh, uh, it's always a touchy feeling. A topic and situation because you, you see it all the time but when it actually happens to you personally you you actually can feel a lot more um, for the the family you know, what they're going through and you, you've been through that moment um, for my mother and father like it's the hardest thing in the world for them because this is their firstborn son and that I, I never can imagine. I never can imagine that, and that's something no parent ever wants to imagine is uh, losing your, your, your kid. So they they take it really hard. Um, my brothers as well, because they all were around the same age. You know, I was I was 10 years old, so I um, it was it was tough for me, but I didn't know everything that was going on or something. I don't. I just don't feel like I was. I don't want to say, I don't know if I was developed uh, enough to really understand the situation and what's going on with racism and uh, a cop and, and these things. I learned these things later, later on in life. Um, and now I, I see it every day, I see it all the time. And I can go back and, and see the situation what happened with my brother and I can see it's like things just haven't changed much.